You're watching Fox 9 on your side at 9. Well, millions of people watched Super Bowl 48 tonight, but that wasn't the case back in 1967. Uh, Sorry. Um, Sorry about the Broncos. You have to be loyal to your team. Yeah, right? Thanks for coming in anyway, Don Nelson. <laughs> okay, so way back 1967, Green Bay Packers playing the Kansas City Chiefs. And a lot of people, including the Packers, didn't even take the American Football League very seriously back then. You they? know, it, it was a pleasure to sit down with number 64, yeah. Jerry Kramer, <laughs> and talk about everything from Super Bowl I to his bid for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I'd heard that Coach Lombardi looked at this game true or false, as a bit of an exhibition game, that he didn't throw, put too much weight into this game. And there was more pressure on him, you're already giving the answer, from the league office to make sure that you beat the Chiefs because they're from the AFL. But Coach Lombardi himself, how did he look at this game? Well, he not only got calls from the league office, he got calls from uh, Mara, the owner of the Giants, Hallis, the owner of the Bears, Rooney, the owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And what they tell him? Beat the hell out of those Kansas City Chiefs. It's not good enough to beat them. you got to embarrass them. you got to really whip them. So he had a lot of pressure on him. After you defeated the Cowboys in a close game for the NFL championship game, did you look at that as we're done, we won the championship? Or did you know in the back of your mind that, oh, yeah, we have to go play this other game out in Los Angeles against the Chiefs, I believe they're called. Well, we were kind of uh, poo-poo in the AFL at that time. We were watching films that week, I remember, and uh, Max McGee was watching the defensive backs, and two of them ran together and knocked themselves down. And Max went, da 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 And so he's doing the Looney Tunes oh, and Mary Melody's bit. And so we're seeing things that isn't really big-time professional football. You have to tell us the story, share us the story about Max McGee. Not going to start that game, right? Boyd Dowler and Carol Dale are your wide receivers. Yeah. So Max is thinking he might see the light of day on Sunday. Dowler gets hurt early, early in the game. Yeah. Now you have to tell the story okay. about Max like to enjoy himself. McGee hadn't played in eight or nine games and didn't expect to play. So he said, uh, I'm going. Sunset Strip was close by and Whiskey a go-go and Mac Max was a go-go guy. So he went out and he got in about time for breakfast. He snuck back into okay. the hotel and uh, no one knew about okay. it. And he's sitting on the bench enjoying the sunshine and a little, Dollar goes a little down. tired from the night before? Well, probably, you know, kind of half dazed, but Dowler gets hurt, and Max doesn't know where his helmet is. And so he's like, where's my hat? Where's my hat? And he grabs somebody else's helmet. And if you ever see that game again, you'll see Bart, Max does a little square out, and Bart throws him about an eight-yard square out, and it hits him in the helmet. It's him right in the thong! and bounces off his helmet. When you went into the locker room, did you all kind of, of course, you patted yourself on the back. It was the, the official last game of the season. But you were, did you have the attitude like, we were supposed to do that? Or did anybody in the locker room go, gosh, you know, Jer, that you can and knock the crap out of me. There was a satisfaction of getting the job done. We went 35 to 10, something like that. And so that felt good. And plus, uh, I'm making twenty-five, six, seven thousand dollars at the time, and I get a fifteen thousand dollar check from the Super Bowl. Now I got the, I get a, like a seven thousand dollar check from the playoff game, so I almost double my salary in the playoff, and that's important. That's that, that, that's big money. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, that's big money. I could I could buy another house with that. I, I would bet you half the people if I came up and you weren't sitting here said. Uh, is Jerry Kramer in the NFL Hall of Fame? I would bet you half of them would say, well, yeah, he is. More like 80%. Commissioner Goodell called me about three years ago when we were working on the pension disability issues. He said, Jerry, you're going to Canton. I go, no, I don't think so. He says, how come? I said, Commissioner, I'm not in the Hall of Fame. You're not? What's that about? How, what's going on there? Commissioner, I don't know. Now, John Hanna played with the New England Patriots, sure. great football player. Yep. He and Joe DeLamalier, Buffalo, used me as their idol or their model. They, they tried to play like me. And 
Delamalera went to the uh, Hall of Fame this last summer and said, look, how can I be in when the guy I patterned myself after is not in? And, and, and John Hanna calls me and says, Jerry, uh, are you going to Canton? I goes, no. He says, how come? I said, John, I'm not in. You're not? How come? Now, he's been in the hall for 25 years, and he doesn't realize I'm not in. So, you know, it's uh, one of those things in life that you just kind of go, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Mm. That's it's crazy. not right. And it I is not right. I, I know agree. we did stories on it. Yeah. There was a huge push, and I believe his daughter, his daughter here Pushing locally, it, yeah. trying to kind of get the bandwagon right. going. We did a lot of Twitter with it. What's up? Here, here's the deal. I, I don't think there is a conspiracy to keep Jerry Kramer out of the Hall of Fame. Okay. I think it's a numbers game. 11 out of those 22 starters for the Packers' glory days are in the Hall of Fame, half the team. Now a couple of those players overlapped. Okay. So it's a numbers game. Are you going to put the entire Green Bay Packers from the 60s in? Are you going to put the entire Pittsburgh Steelers team in from the 1970s? Mm -hmm. Are you mm -hmm. going to put the entire San Francisco 49er team in? You can't, and it's an 80s game. Uh, you, know, it, you look at it this way. There's, uh, they used to call it old timers, but it's now a senior committee where they look at the players that you know, had played many, many years right. ago. Right. Before 1985, I believe. So they can nominate two players. And now, again, it's a numbers game because there's a lot of players. As each year goes on, no, sure. more of those older players are pushed right. forward. Right. You know what I think it is? Everyone thinks he's in the Hall of Fame. What? No, you're right. The commissioner thinks he's the in commissioner the Hall thought of he was, Fame. And, and, here's, and, and here's the bottom line with Jerry Kramer. Uh, my goodness, he's, he has all the rings, he has the championships, yeah. he played for Vince Lombardi. I mean, yes. you need to say any more. But he has one of the most famous blocks, if not the most famous yeah. block, in the Ice Bowl against the Dallas Cowboys, where Bart Starr went right in after him in the end zone, they win the game. Yeah. Okay, right. well, we'll start a new Anyway, <laughs> yeah, Jerry should be in, though. That was fun. It's a great interview. Yeah.